Greetings from the kitchen folks. This is the first in a series of films that I'm going to make and stitch together to make a small documentary about how you can make your own spirits, 40% ABV spirits, from nothing but the raw ingredients and the still. So in this film I'm going to make a tomato paste wash. So a tomato paste wash, as it sounds, has got tomatoes in it. Mm. from a tube, tomato puree. So this is just supermarket bought tomato puree and I'll read out the ingredients to you. Concentrated tomato puree, acidity regulator, citric acid. That's it. There's nothing in here that's harmful to the brew. So this is going to act as the yeast nutrient and this is going to be the base for what I'm going to make today. The other key ingredients in today's brew, apart from the tomato puree, will be two and a half kilos of brewing sugar. This cup holds 400 grams, so I'll be divvying that up. I'm using brewing sugar because it gives a nice clean result. There'll be about 11 litres of uh, water going into it. Five litres will be spring water and the rest will be tap water. Now I don't usually use tap water in my brews because it makes your brews taste a bit like home brew. However, as this is going through a still, uh, I'm not going to worry too much about that. And then the yeast I'm going to use is Lalvin EC1118 Champagne Sparkling Wine and Cider Yeast. This is a really simple, simple brew. My fermenting vessel of choice today is this Muntons Wine Fermenter. Second time using it, it's worked really well so far. Uh, this holds about 12 litres of wine. As you can see, my kitchen's a bit busy, so it's a bit of a struggle finding the spaces to work. But my first job is to pour five litres of cold spring water into the wine fermenter. And I'm doing this to line it because I'm going to be pouring some warm water in. Not boiling or anything like that, but at least this will protect the base of the fermenter when I do. My next step is to half fill this large saucepan with tap water. Then into the saucepan, I'm going to add two and a half kilos of brewing sugar. That's all my brew sugar in the pan, so it's gas on. And I'm going to turn that down, and I just want this water to warm. And as it's warming, I'm just going to stir it. And I want this sugar to dissolve. It won't take very long. Uh, brew sugar, dextrose, uh, monohydrate, it's pretty good at dissolving. It's very fine. Uh, within five minutes this will be clear. So while I'm waiting for that, back to the Muntins wine fermenter and my tomato puree. I am going to add into this about two thirds of the tube. I don't need to put it all in. It's a 200 gram tube, so imagine two thirds of that going in. You can do the maths. So here's my tomato with water. I'm just going to agitate it so it breaks the puree strands up. Doesn't take much doing. So at the end of fermentation, this will just have a tinge of colour to it. But after it's gone through the air still, it will be completely transparent and colourless. So back to my sugar water. A couple more minutes, this will definitely be done. So as I said, after five minutes, you can pretty much see that other than that little bit of powdery swirl, this is fairly opaque now. This will do. I've turned the heat off. And now it's time to add it into there. So I'm going to pop this in the sink because it could be messy. And here we go. So this is now a very sweet tomato soup. And that's heavy and it's not the easiest thing to maneuver. I could do with some handles or something for it actually. Right I'm just going to pop this over here. I need to take the original gravity. This is currently between 26 and 28 which is too warm but using the tap I'm going to put some into my hydrometer tube and pop this in the fridge. So the tap's quite handy actually. I'm not going to put this back in there. This is going to go in the fridge and then that's done with. 
I'm going to pop my yeast into this now. So I'm going to use this Lalvin EC1118 and I'm going to put one heaped teaspoon, two heaped teaspoons and a level teaspoon. So using my spare hydrometer I'm just going to give this a little stir around because I'd like the yeast not to just float on top but to actively mix in. Now this will form a Krausen, the foamy head on top and that is why I haven't filled this any higher. I don't think it will form a big Krausen. The last time I made one of these it didn't but I don't want to risk it all being messy because it's not quite as straightforward putting a blow-off pipe on one of these. I'm going to leave this hydrometer actually in the brew. It'll be interesting to see uh, how it comes out and this is the um, over temperature original gravity it's on 1090 1.090 currently but this is over temperature so it'll be interesting to see how that compares to the on temperature one which should in theory be higher so i'm just going to put the rest of the fermenter together now so this basket goes in first then the lid which has an integrated airlock gets screwed on and I need to make sure that it's on the thread evenly so it's airtight. It feels pretty good actually. Then I need to add a little water into the airlock, like so. Then this thing pushes down, that's it, that's on properly. And then finally the top screws in. And again I want to make sure it's tight and that the thread's not skew whiff that seems okay to me and here it is in my utility room alongside a few friends this is now cooled to 20 degrees so i'm going to pop the hydrometer in and check the original gravity from this one and as expected it is slightly higher because this is a cooler temperature and this one is starting off with an original gravity of 1.096. So that is what I'm going to record as my original gravity for this brew, 1.096. Just a very quick update. As you can see, the wine fermenter is now bubbling and there is a small Krausen on top. It's probably about just under a centimetre in width. I'm not anticipating that growing a whole lot bigger. And so fermentation took about 40 minutes to begin um, and this is now looking quite healthy. So unless anything dramatic happens during the fermentation, the next film that you see from me will be at the end of fermentation when it comes to racking off this into demijohns before it goes in the air still. See you then folks. Evening from the utility room folks. Tonight I'm going to rack off my tomato paste wash in preparation for it going through the still. So here's the wash. I'm a little bit disappointed in its lack of clarity and also all that trub on top. I didn't get this the last time I did a tomato paste wash at all. It completely all fell to the bottom and it ended up clearing itself. This has been in there now for six weeks. It's completely stopped fermenting but it's nowhere near clearing itself. So I'm going to have to do that. So I've got my fermentation vessels set up here with the funnels in which are two five litre water bottles i'm just going to hold this from there in there for a couple of days but i'm going to be using a filter okay i'm experimenting with camera angles i'm not quite sure what you can and can't see but i'm just attempting to remove the screw top from the muntons wine fermenter there we go and then there is a filter so I'm just popping my siphoning tube in. I've got it held in place with a clip. Now you'll notice on the fermenter there is a tap and I could use the tap but I just don't want to fill the filter in the tap up with all the rubbish that's in there so I'm just siphoning. I've got rather a long tube, probably too long, so I'm going to move this down onto the floor so gravity can help me. Right, wish me luck. Well, it's going. Gravity certainly is helping me.
Yeah, that's going quite well actually. I'm quite pleased with that. And there we go. That's not bad at all. I'm just going to leave that down there to settle for five minutes. And I'm going to get my kit cleaned because this is going to be used again probably tomorrow. So I've just dipped the hydrometer in this one and it's on 0 0.990. So that's a great outcome. And here it is. I'm going to leave it for two days and then it's going in the still. So I'll catch you then. Good evening from the conservatory folks. Tonight I'm going to be air stilling my tomato paste wash. So I've got my 10 litres of wash just here and these are now going to go into the air still. Okay I've got my still set up just here and I'm just going to pour the tomato paste wash in until I reach the maximum fill line. It will take most of this 5 litre bottle but not quite all of it. So that's the liquid now in the air still. Now I need to put the lid on the still, line the electrics up just down here. Okay and I'm nearly ready for business. Okay, this is my initial setup. I'm going to collect the first 150ml that comes out into this bottle. That 150ml is called the heads. The heads are something I don't want to drink. They can contain toxins, but the liquid is still useful. It can be used in screen wash uh, and it's flammable, so it can be used as fire lighter, whatever you want to use it for. I'm choosing not to drink it just in case there's anything dangerous in there. I don't know if there is or not, but I'm just being cautious. Okay, I'm all ready to go. So for the initial run, to get rid of the heads, let's go. This will take around an hour before the liquid starts to come through, so we'll have an update then. And here we go, one hour and five minutes in, and the collection of the heads is underway. I just need to let this bottle now fill to about there and that's 150 ml. Okay this is coming out now nice and steady, it won't be long. And now that is it, it's reached the bottom of the funnel, I know that's 150 ml so I'm now going to turn this off. And I'm just going to leave this for a few seconds for the dripping to stop. This is about 70% ABV which is in here. It's likely that in here that as well as ethanol there's methanol, esters and other bits and pieces. Not all of which are good for the human body. But at 70% ABV they are flammable. Kids don't try this at home. Isn't that pretty? Okay, I've harvested the heads. They're out of the way now. It's now time for the stripping run. So for the stripping run, I've got a slightly different setup. So I've got my air still as before, but then I've got this copper device just here. This is called a parrot. 
and the parrot is a very, very useful implement. The distilled liquid drips down here and then it fills this. And as it fills this, it raises this. This is an alchometer. And that means that I can monitor the strength of the alcohol coming through here at any one time. So I know that when it gets to say less than 15%, it's time to turn it off. What comes out of here drips into this bottle. When the bottle's full, I tip it into a demijohn and then I carry on. So this is the stripping run. I'm stripping out the colour, a lot of the nasties and the rubbishness and uh, most of the flavour. So let us begin. Once again. And now it's just playing the waiting game again. So the stripping run is now in full effect and what I'm collecting now is called the hearts. So you throw away the heads but you keep the hearts. So just looking at the alchometer, what's coming out of here is currently 60% ABV. So this is just great. Right, the first 500 mil are just about ready and it's still on 30% what's coming through. So I'm gonna swap the bottles over now. So I take this bottle out, put that bottle in, bish bash bosh. Okay, I'm just looking at the alchometer now and what's coming out of the air still is down to 20%. The second bottle is just there. And we're probably going to turn this off in about 15-20 minutes time. Right, the output of the distiller has now dropped to 10%. I'm going to turn it off completely now. And this is the stripping run of the first gallon or first five litres of tomato paste wash done. I'm now leaving this to cool down and I'll pick this up in the morning. Morning folks, it's the next day. So last night I removed the heads and I started the stripping run. What I've now got in here is the tails from the first lot that I've put through. This stuff in here will still be warm because it's incredibly insulated, but it won't be too hot, hopefully. And this is just to be disposed of. It's no good whatsoever, and I don't need it for anything. So I'm just going to tip that away. So all I need to do at the minute is unplug this and then gently get the lid off. And there might be a little bit of steam coming off that. There is warmth in there, definitely. And that is the tails that's left in there. Just a quick change of room into the kitchen. So this is the hearts which I've uh, got so far from the stripping run and I'm pouring it into this plastic water bottle. There was actually a bit of spring water in the bottom of the bottle which is absolutely fine because I've got to dilute this back to 20% anyway because then I need to rerun it through the hair, hair still on what's called the spirit run. But before I can do the spirit run I've got to run the rest of my tomato paste wash through. Okay folks, so I've got to put the rest of the tomato paste wash through. This is the bit that was left in the bottom of the other one. It's got some sediment in it, but do you know what? I'm just going to shove it in, it doesn't matter. It'll just wash out um, a few afterwards. I might as well use everything. So there's that. And then here's the one which I hadn't started yesterday. And I'm going to fill this up to the full line. And then I'm going to have to run this through exactly the same as yesterday. I've got to remove the heads and then I've got to do the stripping run. So this is going to be another three or four hours, just like it was yesterday, um, before I've actually done that. And then I'm going to have to run the rest of that through. So this is basically going to take me all day long and I might even not do it all today. I might do some tomorrow. So I'm just getting the lid in place, just like yesterday. So I haven't got my little bottle that I had yesterday to hand, but this will collect the heads. So back on. So it's exactly the same process as yesterday. 150 ml of heads, 
and then I'll start to collect the hearts. So unless anything dramatic happens in the interim, I'm just going to keep running this through like I did yesterday, like I've already demonstrated to you, and I'll come back to you when the stripping run is completed. Okay? Catch you then. Okay, the stripping run is done, and I've got about four litres of spirit in this bottle. This is 24 hours after I first began, but I have slept in between. So it wasn't 24 hours continuous action. I'm just dropping the alcometer in here to see what the ABV of this liquid is. So the liquid in this bottle is currently 28%. So I'm going to get this down to 20% by adding extra water. And then I'm going to push the whole lot through tomorrow on the spirit run. Put as much in as I can. Okay, I filled the water bottle right up. It's now on about 25%. I think that will be safe enough, but what I'll do when I add this tomorrow into the distiller, I'll just add a little bit of extra water in there with it. So I'll catch you in the morning, folks, for the spirit room. Morning from the conservatory, folks. It's still in day three. Today it's the spirit run. So I've already extracted the heads. I've already done the stripping run. That's out of the way. Today it's the spirit run. I'm going to begin by adding some water into the distiller because as I said yesterday, I need to further water down the ABV of what's going into the stiller. So I'm going to put a litre of water in. And here's my 20 something percent spirit. And I'm going to fill this up to the full line now. It's got a slightly sweet smell, very slightly, but no, no real major smell to it. Maybe a bit sweet vodka ishy, something like that. So again, same as yesterday, I'm putting the lid back on. I'm lining the electrics back up, just like I did yesterday, exactly the same procedure. So here's the setup for today. Everything that comes out today, I'm going to keep which is between 60 and 15%. So when it drops to below 15%, I'll get rid of it. And I'm expecting the first lot to come out to be at about 60. There's no need to strip any more heads off. So I've got distiller, parrot, alchometer, collection bottle. Time to start. And it's gonna be about an hour or so before the first liquid appears. I'll give you an update then. It's an hour and ten minutes later. I missed the beginning. We got so much in the bottle. But the spirit run is firmly underway and what's coming out is just below 70%. So that's absolutely fantastic. Okay, so the first bottle is getting kind of full. I'm going to swap it over and it's just below 60%. So this is going really well. I've swapped the collection bottles over and this is now going into the demijohn. Now it's just a case of being patient and carrying on. It's still coming through at over 20%, just under 30. And I've got my second 500ml bottle full. That goes into the demijohn. Now I just carry on. Okay, on bottle number three, I'm about a third of the way up and the ABV of what's coming out of the still has now dropped to 10%, so it's time to switch this off. And I'm now just going to leave this for an hour to cool down before coming back to it. Hey folks, a bit more time than an hour's passed. People to see, things to do and all that sort of stuff. But back onto this now. So I'm now going to separate all the bits and bobs that I've got down here. I'm going to get the lid off. And let's have a look at the tails inside here. Now it's still really warm, there's a lot of, lot of heat coming off that, but it's not red hot like it would have been earlier. So there's the tails, they're crystal clear. They're still 10% alcohol, and I'm not going to throw these away. I'm going to add to them what I've got left in here. And I might need to do this twice more before I've finished uh, the spirit run, but that's basically what I'm gonna do. 
So in this goes up to the full level, and that's right there. So I'll need to do one more run, a smaller run after this one, because there's still a bit left in there, but you know, waste not, want not. So get the distiller lid back on, plug it back in. Now before I can go any further, I need to empty the parrot. I need to empty the parrot into the demijohn. If you don't empty the parrot and you run the distiller again into it when it's already got liquid in, sometimes, I don't know why, physics people might be able to answer this question, it doesn't run through and it just floods over the top. So it's a good idea to empty it. But if you do know why, what the reason is, well, you know, what's the force of nature called that causes that, please tell me in the comments. So then I put the parrot back underneath. And if you can hear a loud noise in the background, that's Leeds Bradford Airport, which is um, a mile as the crow flies from where I am stood. And that's some lucky people taking off somewhere exotic, no doubt, like Belfast or Schiphol. No, probably Benidorm. Right, let's turn this on again. So we're good to go. So once again, I'm just playing the waiting game. So I've got all this to run through, and then I need to run the remainder that I've got left from the stripping wash through this. That's, you know, two more sort of runs in here. There's no point in you watching all that. You've seen me do it once. It's exactly the same process. So I'll come back to you when the spirit run is over. See you then. Okay, day four the next day. I've left this overnight. I didn't want to do any more last night. Here is what I've got in the Demijohn. So looking at this, the whole Demijohn holds one gallon, which is 4.54 litres. So I've probably got, I reckon, about three and a half to four litres of spirit there. I'm not sure what the ABV is, but we're going to find out. Dip the spiritometer in. And that's not going to work. So I need to get the hydrometer tube. Okay, here's my hydrometer tube. Try again. Now that has got an ABV. Looking at that down there. The ABV of what's in there is about 38%. 38% ABV. I've now put a filter on top of this, which is breathable. It's a mesh filter. And I'm now going to leave this to stand for three days. And so any of these sort of strong um, burning sort of vapours hopefully will escape from that. So I'll be back in three days time when the flavouring process will begin. Greetings from the kitchen folks. Let's have a clear white spirit update. Here it is. It's been three days in the demijohn and because it's December I'm going to be flavouring with some mulled wine spice. I'm going to make a mulled spirit. So I'm just using a funnel. It's actually a dishwasher salt funnel, believe it or not, but it's wide enough to get everything into the demijohn. So these spices contain orange peel, lemon peel, nutmeg, cloves, cassia, allspice. Okay, so that's going to be a really nice and very Christmassy smell. I'm going to leave some of it just spice flavour, but some of this I'm then going to divide and I'm going to add toffee to as well. So a toffee spice. So in this goes. So instead of this sitting on oak chips, like you might do with a, a whiskey or a brandy, this is sitting on spice. And not the illegal kind. Being a Barnsley lad, Spice is what we used to call sweets or candies to you Americans and lollies to you Australians. I never did get my lollies, but there you go. Right, so I'm just going to give that a little stir and shake. Shake it a baby now. Christmas spice. Come on, come on, come on, baby, now. It's looking nice. It doesn't look bad, that, does it? Yeah, okay. So it's now going to stay on here.
for a week before I go to the next stage. Catch you in a week's time. Good morning from the kitchen folks. It's a mulled winter schnapps update. Let's have a look at it. Here it is. It has been 10 days on the mulled fruit and spices. Thankfully they haven't dissolved and it's not gone all cloudy. So today I'm going to filter it off of those. I'm going to bottle some and then I'm going to do something else with the remainder. So you might find this bizarre, but I'm actually going to filter this through my coffee percolator, which I've cleaned out. I've run water through it. And what I'm actually going to do is pour the fruit into here. So the clear liquid then comes out down here and the fruit catches in the basket. It's one of the best filters I've got in the house. So I'm just going to use this one. So I'm just going to very gently pour this in. And I obviously don't want to overfill it because the glass collection jug underneath has a limited capacity. It smells absolutely fantastic by the way. The mulled spices are just massively apparent. Okay, that will do for now. So that's what's in the basket. And here is what is in the jug. And that is not too bad clarity wise. There's a tiny bit of sediment come through, but I'm not worried about that. So just for now, I'm going to pour this into my demijohn, which I've got just here. Unfortunately, this jug isn't the best pourer. It does cause a bit of drippage. So in effect, what I'm doing is basically racking. And now I've got to repeat the process again and again until I've got all of that into here without the fruit. So I'll be back in a minute or two. Okay, so there's the filtered schnapps so far. Here is what is left of the spice. That's just going to go on the garden as fertilizer. And right now I'm just cleaning the coffee machine out by running some water through it. Right, I'm going to have two bottles of the mulled spirit, pretty much as it is, but I'm just going to slightly sweeten it by adding two of these with normal household sugar in, into each bottle. This will give it a nice sweeter taste for, if I wanted to use it as shots for example, it won't have that harsh bitterness if I can just sweeten it a little bit. Now it's simply a case of filling these two bottles. Just do it nice and gently, I don't want to waste any. And you'll immediately see this goes cloudy with the sugar, but that will dissolve and clear. That's it, just to the neck. Now I know that I've added sugar to these, there's absolutely no danger whatsoever of fermentation taking place. The sugar will dissolve over time. So the very small volume of sugar that's gone in there won't affect the ABV of this. However, I'm going to be adding more than just a small amount of sugar into this one, which will increase the physical volume and that will therefore decrease the alcohol by volume, which is why I need to measure how much I've got of this first. Measuring jug. So I'm guessing I might have one and a half litres, but let's see what the jug says. And I've actually got 1.8 litres of spirit left. That's great. So I'm going to pour that back into the demijohn now. Now I know that there's 1.8 litres there. Now I'm going to add the magic ingredient to turn this into a different kind of schnapps altogether. So these are Maynard's Murray Mints. They're a toffee which has got a minty flavour. So this is going to be a minty toffee mulled spice. It will be delicious. As ever, I have to begin by quality control in the product. We're good to go. Then it's simply a case of unwrapping and dropping. 
unwrapping and dropping and unwrapping yeah you guessed it and dropping oh splash right i've got about another 60 of these to do so i'll come back to you in a little while So I've now got all my mints in there. I've decided I'm going to put a little bit more sugar in. So I'm going to put four of these in there. Okay, so now I'm going to give this a mush around and this will go cloudy because of the Murray mints and that's fine. It will have a toffee color and a minty toffee mulled flavour. And all I've got to do now every day is this until all the mints have dissolved. Now the mints and that little bit of sugar I put in will increase the physical volume of the liquid. So I need to measure how much liquid's there. It was 1.8 litres exactly. I need to measure what's there and that increase in physical volume, the percentage of it, I need to decrease the alcohol by volume by the same percentage. So there'll be a little bit of maths, not too much, but there'll be a little bit of maths at the end. Right, so I'm going to do this every day, probably three or four times a day, until they've all dissolved. So I'll come back to you then. So as far as my mulled schnapps go, with the sugar in, then I've just got to get that sugar to dissolve now. So it's the same in both bottles. It won't take long to dissolve. Simply upside down, then back, and move it around and agitate it until the sugar dissolves. It'll only take a day or two. And this will then completely clear again. So just to finish these two off, I'm adding a little plastic shrink wrap on top. And there we go, the boiling water seals the shrink. Just makes it look nice and tidy. So I've made some bottle labels using a simple template in Microsoft Word. Okay, I'm just going to label my schnapps bottles now. So it's nice to label them, make it look nice. I mean, I put a lot of effort into the drink, so let's try and get the bottles looking okay. And there they are. So I'm bottling today on the 25th of November, one month before Christmas. Let's open these and sample these the week before Christmas. So you can watch this before Christmas. How nice is that? Hey folks, it's three days later. It's a winter mulled spice update. And remember when I told you that the mint imperials were a magic ingredient? Let's have a look why. Look at that. Isn't it lovely? So we get the same effect that you get with a B52 cocktail where you get the layers that separate and you end up with distinct layers within the drink. Just to hold it up there like that so you can see and see what happens when I shake it around. There we go. So we get the appearance of Bailey's and then it will naturally separate. So I'll put this on a time lapse and let's just have a look at it separating. Okay, you got to see some of the separation, but it's time to move on. I want to now measure how much is actually in the jug to see how much the physical volume increased with the addition of the Mint Imperials. So I'm just going to shake it up again. And it will separate in the bottles, and if you pour it into shot glasses, it would also separate, but it takes a little bit of time. 
Right, let's get this into this jug and I can measure exactly how much liquid I've got now. It's so smooth. It's going to fill the jug right up actually. Okay, I've actually got exactly two litres, which is fantastic. So it's now time to get this into the bottles. I want to do this as gently as possible, but I've started off by making a nice big mess, never mind. It does smell wonderful. Okay, I'm just going to bung my bottles. Uh, that's that one in. Nice and straightforward. I'm just going to rinse my bottles off. Obviously, I made a bit of a mess while I was filling them up, so it's nice to have them clean. And there they are. I just now need to work out the revised alcohol by volume, taking into account the increase in physical volume caused by the mints. Okay, just a little bit of maths now. It's not too bad, don't worry. Okay, so initially I had 1,800 ml, 1 1.8 litres of the mulled spirit. I increased this by 200 ml by adding the mint imperials. So if I take 200 and I divide it by 1,800, that gives me a figure of 0 0.11111 infinity. And I multiply this by 100, that gives me a figure of 11.1 .1 infinity. So let's just say 11. So I have increased the physical volume by 11% of what was there. So the alcohol by volume was 38%. If I've increased the physical volume by 11%, I need to decrease the alcohol by volume by 11% also. So I take 11, which is the volume increase, and I divide that by 100. And then I multiply this figure by 38. And that tells me that I need to decrease the alcohol by volume by 4.18%. Let's just say 4%. So the mould spirit was 38%. So I deduct from that 4%. And that means that my final ABV for my minted mould spirit is 34%. Hope that wasn't too bad maths wise. Right, I've made up some labels using a simple Microsoft Word template. I'm just going to print these off. Okay, so here are the bottles after a couple of hours. You can see that the separation is uh, happening in earnest. I'm now going to put the labels on them. Right, I shall just get these on. Make them look nice. Yeah. Lovely. And here they are. And here they'll stay until it comes to opening and tasting just before Christmas. So the next clip, and indeed the final series of clips in this film, will be the opening and tasting just before Christmas. I'll catch you then, folks. Good evening from the kitchen folks. It's my winter schnapps grand opening night and I cannot tell you how excited I am about this. My first air still opening for my first air still video. Fingers crossed that these are going to turn out okay. So I need to just begin by cutting the plastic and opening. Wow. That actually smells really good. Okay. Remember kids, drink responsibly. Anyway, cheers folks, down the hatch, skull, whatever they say where you're from.
absolute winter spice, Christmas spice, fantastic. I'm glad I sweetened it a little bit. It could have actually done with sweetening a little bit more even because it's not that sweet on the palate, but it's very, very nice. It's not fiery, it's not burning. The off flavours and the off smells that you get when you first put the spirit through the air still have gone. In fact, if you'd given me this and told me that it was one that you'd bought, I would have believed you. I can imagine that this would go very nicely with ginger ale or ginger beer if you were mixing it. But I'll tell you something, whew, it's certainly a warmer. Right, I've enjoyed that one. This is the one that I'm most excited about. I just love the separation. It looks absolutely fantastic. It is just classic that. And it's like the magic of Christmas. It's the snow globe drink. Because when we do that and that and that and that and that and that, it transforms from the red color with white collars and a white neck to something more resembling Bailey's or eggnog. So really, looking forward to this give it a good shake it hasn't been shaken for quite a while so make sure it's all nicely mixed right good stuff let's have a look so once again cheers folks down the hatch This is so much smoother and creamier because of the constituency with the dissolved toffees that are in there. The mint toffees with the mulled spice works incredibly well. It's like all areas of my mouth, all the zones are being sort of tingled and punctuated right now. It's proper nice out there. Lovely stuff this, really good. And what will be nice about this one is if you pour it and leave it, it should separate naturally in the glass. In fact, I'll do that and we'll come back and have a look. Hey folks, this is what the spirit looks like when you leave it to separate on its own. Admittedly, it's been a couple of hours, so it does take time, but there you go. So as with the other drinks, hope you can see that and appreciate it. Cheers folks. Really, really good. Fabulous, actually. Wow. Both levels, you get it. You definitely get it when it goes in. You get that soft start and then whoosh, I'm so pleased with how these have turned out. I could never have imagined that I could make spirits that would be this good from an air still. I've got plenty more films to come now with things which follow this, which I will be happy with. So cheers, folks, and I'll catch you on the next brew, or still, or whenever. Just have a Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the home and garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv. Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. -S. 
If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.